Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well. It's Dr. D. I'm back with you. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, microeconomics. Um, I had a, in, pardon me. In my class, we had a few people who struggled with this problem. So today we're going to take a look at it uh, and see if we can't uh, try to make some headway. So here we go. This is the problem as, as we receive it. The graph below depicts marginal cost, average total cost, and average variable cost for Dos Ventanas, a supplier of mangoes in Ecuador. Um, and then if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see there are uh, six questions here that they want us to, to answer. The first one just asked us to do some labeling. So um, we have some cost curves on this graph, uh, and we want to label these cost curves. Um, and then after that, we're going to uh, try to interpret, I apologize for the zigzags, this was in word, and apparently Ventanas is not a word in English. Um, we're going to try to answer some questions about how we think those Ventanas would behave, assuming that they're in a uh, perfectly competitive uh, market. So just taking a look here, we see we've got three curves. They're all U-shaped. Um, generally speaking, what? Well, we have a marginal cost curve. It's not always U-shaped. Uh, in this case, it is. Uh, and the marginal cost curve represents the additional cost of producing an additional unit. At first, it often starts high because uh, all your fixed costs are being incorporated. And then as you kind of uh, produce more, as you increase produ your output, um, the, the additional cost goes down for a little while. The reason for this is that uh, you're hiring labor, and that as that labor is being divided and specialized, uh, it becomes more and more efficient until at some point uh, it stops being the case that it's more and more efficient and the marginal cost starts to rise um, and then eventually it starts to it continues to rise. Um, I take that back. The marginal cost doesn't take into account fixed costs. Marginal cost starts high because of the change in variable costs. So um, while I still, <laughs> while I haven't spoken too much, uh, the marginal cost uh, should should start high just because it, it takes a lot of work for one person to do all the tasks. Um, average total cost starts high because of the fixed costs, and that starts highest. We can't see it because here it, it, it should extend um, up and up and up. It should go all the way up here, um, and that's going down at first because fixed costs are declining as well as variable costs, as we can see, and it starts to go up because variable costs decline. Average variable cost will always be less than average total cost uh, because it incorporates both the average variable costs. Uh, I'm sorry, because the average total cost incorporates both the average variable cost and average fixed cost, which are not visible on this graph. Um, but we know that the average variable cost would look something like this asymptotes, right? So it's like a it's asymptotic. So let's do some labeling here. Um, we know that this is going to be the marginal cost curve. Marginal cost curve is always going to be the most extreme of the curves as well, right? So it starts out the lowest and ends up the highest. That's because uh, the average cost curves... Um, have a lot more inertia. They're carrying all, all the previous uh, units. Um, here, this uh, this one that's up top, we're going to call this the average total cost curve. And this one down here, this is going to be the average variable cost curve. Okay. And so this is a model of a company. Um, I added this one, so I'll label this fixed costs or average fixed costs. Um, but, uh, but that was not one of the ones the question asked. Useful to keep in mind. All right, at a market price of $20, how many bushels of mangoes per month will Dos Ventanas supply? Well, if this is a perfectly competitive market, then if, uh, if we have a market price of $20, that means that the demand curve faced by the firm is just a horizontal line right at $20. And so this is their demand curve they face. Um, if this demand curve is horizontal, uh, it means that it's also their marginal revenue curve as well as their price curve, right? Because let's say they make... 10 bushels a month. If they want to make 10 more bushels, all they have to do is make them. They don't have to lower their price if they want to make and sell them because in a competitive market, uh, the marginal mango mango supplier, right, mango grower, is just a drop in a bucket. They don't have any effect on the overall price in this model. So they have a decision to make. The decision that they have to make is how many should we grow? Um, and what we want to do in this case is consider this to be marginal revenue. So if we make 10 units or 10 bushels, uh, then we get $20 per bushel for those. Um, our marginal cost is kind of high here, but that's okay. We're going to, you know, it gets lower. Make another 10. Uh, we're still at $20 bushel in marginal revenue. Our marginal cost is really low. So our revenue is high, right? Our revenue is all the way up here and our cost is all the way down here. So we want to keep making more. Do that again. High revenue, low cost. High revenue, low cost. High revenue, well, medium cost. And then here, we're at a point where re uh, marginal revenue and marginal costs are equal. That means the cost of making that 
bushel, that marginal bushel of mangoes is equal to the to the revenue that that bushel generates, um, which means that last one it's a wash, right? We'll make it because 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 well, because really we're talking about continuous stuff, and so the, the you know it's the last sliver of a bushel. Um, uh, but we wouldn't want to make any more because up here we can see that our costs are higher than our, our revenues on the margin. Um, and when that's the case, that means making more would, would mean we'd lose money. So we have an incentive to, to continue in this direction and then an incentive to, to decrease if we get too far ahead, which means that this point right here is an equilibrium, right, where we don't have an incentive to change our behavior. This question asks how many bushels. Um, and so at that point, we go down here. And we see that we're at 50 bushels, so that's going to be Q star. 50 bushels a month. Cool. Cool. That's how many we would supply. Um, so that's part B, 50. Q star equals 50. All right, the next question. At that quantity, what is Dos Ventanas' average cost per bushel? Now, if it's his average cost, it means average total cost. Um, and one thing to keep in mind when you're working on these type of problems is that once we have decided that this is the quantity we are producing right here, this that we're here at 50, which I just scribbled out to 50, but 50 is it. None of the rest of the stuff matters very much um, in terms of what we're thinking about, right? Because we have decided that this is our plan, and so everything else we look at, um, at least for you know at this at this quantity, etc., is going to be along this line. So our average cost at that quantity is going to be where uh, what the average total cost is as uh, when we have 50 bushels a month um, and so if we look we can see that at 50 bushels a month right here right, that, that little that little point right there is where our uh, average total cost is now going all the way across back this way just to read the price or read the, co the, the cost sorry you can see that it's halfway between 10 and 15 so this is going to be 12.50 12.5 and so here we go, ATC at Q equals 50 equals 12.5. Here we go, 12.5. So we've learned something about uh, our cost situation. Let's see, Let's see if we can fit all this stuff. There we go. That's part C. Part D, how much profit will Dos Ventanas make at that market price? Okay, now we've looked at two ways to calculate profit. One of them is super useful, um, but you can't really see it on the graph like this. That is profit, which I'm going to use pi to, to signify. Profit equals total revenue, TR, minus total cost. Okay. Now we could, we can view that on here. Total revenue is going to, but we don't have total revenue as a graph. Total revenue is an area, right? So let's look at that. Total revenue is an area. That area is going to be given, it's going to be a rectangle, P times Q. So P, well, the price, the market price is given here, 20. And so P is here. And if we want a rectangle that's P units high, we're going to look at a rectangle that goes all the way from 0 up to 20 along this along this axis, along the p-axis. Okay, now q units wide, that's going to be q star, that's 50, and so we want a rectangle that's all the way over here. And so what we have is a rectangle, that's this this big rectangle. Right? So, uh, goes all the way down here and all the way across here, and so it's a pretty big rectangle. We could calculate the area of it, right? It's going to be 20 times 50. Um, 20 times 50 is 1,000. And so this should be a thousand dollars, right? Because it's twenty dollars per kilogram times, or twenty dollars a bushel times fifty bushels. It's gonna be a thousand dollars a month. That's our revenue, okay? That's that blue shaded area. We can also look at our costs, right? Our cost is gonna be one way to find total cost is to find average total cost, which is times quantity, because the average total cost is total cost divided by quantity times quantity, and then those cancel out, and that gives us our total cost. So our average total cost, we said, was this 12.5, um, and then quantity, again, is going to be the width, and so we have here a rectangle that is this tall and this wide. And so we'll take our total revenue, which is the blue shaded rectangle, and subtract our total cost, which is this red shaded rectangle, and you can see that there's a, a residual between those two, right? There's an area that those two don't take up, and that's this green shaded rectangle. Right? Um, how big is the 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 uh, red shaded rectangle? 
Um, let me pull up a calculator. I could probably do it. I, yeah, I could certainly do it, but let's do it with the calculator just so I don't make it idiot myself. 12.5 times 50. 625. Yep, because it would be 25 times 25. Um, so now we have minus 625. 1,000 minus 625, that's going to be $375 in profit. That's one way to find it, and that's that's pretty useful on a graph like this. I find it to be a little bit easier to, to, to do some algebra here to begin with, and then we can solve it. So here you can see that we have P times Q minus ATC times Q, and I'm just going to distribute out the Q. So that what we get is now is that pi equals P minus ATC times Q. And on our graph, that has a very nice intuitive approach because P is here and ATC is here. And what we have there, P minus ATC, uh, let me pick a, a richer color so we can, is from this point down to this point, right? It's this distance. And that has a nice intuition. That is the per unit profit. In this case, this is going to be 20 minus 12.5, which is 7.5. That means on each bushel, uh, Dos Ventanas is earning 750. Now, how many bushels do they sell? Well, they sell 50 bushels. And so our profit then is going to be this rectangle here that we can show right down here. How much profit do they make at that market price? Now it's going to be 7.5 times 50, which again is 375. Part E says depict the profit on the graph above, and we've done that quite a bit. Um, so I'll just write it in here. Profit. That's a little bit of a messy graph at this point, but you can see we have profit here. Huzzah. Look at all that profit. So there's our profit. All right. So last but not least, what is the minimum price at which Dos Ventanas would produce? Okay, now in your class or uh, in, in, in a lecture, or Google it if, you, if this, you're totally new to this. What we found was that a firm will continue to produce in the short run as long as they can cover their fixed costs. Um, so if their total revenue is greater than their very, or I'm sorry, as long as they can cover their variable costs. So if their total revenue is greater than their variable costs, they'll stay in business. Um, they'll shut down as if their total revenue is less than their variable costs. If we divide both of these by quantity, we'll find that they'll stay in business as long as price is greater than their average variable cost. Now we have average variable cost on here, right? It's the green line, which you can, the green curve, um, which you can still kind of see. Um, it starts here and it goes down and then right here and it comes right back up again. Now it turns out that marginal cost is above that everywhere. So marginal cost will be equal to price um, for a perfectly competitive firm uh, until it is the case uh, that you are right here at the minimum of the AVC curve. And so this right here, this is the shutdown point. The minimum AVC, minimum of the AVC is their shutdown point. Uh, we can see what the price is by just going across here. So if we're at the minimum average variable cost, in this case, that corresponds to a price of seven dollars and fifty cents, and so the minimum price that they would, um, at which they would produce, that's going to be seven dollars and fifty cents a bushel. Okay, uh, just to tidy your stuff here, profit was three hundred seventy-five dollars, average total cost, output, etc. Okay, just to review. In this case, we started with three curves. We had to label them. Uh, the marginal cost curve is the one that starts out the lowest and ends up the highest. That's always going to be the case, except in the weird cases where marginal cost curve is perfectly horizontal. Um, that, that can happen. It's a special case usually. Uh, lots of times then what you'll have is a perfect monopoly, or I mean a, a natural monopoly. Um, what else? We also had the average total cost, which is always above the average variable cost, and those two get closer over time because not shown, but I drew it, the average fixed cost is declining constantly. Okay, so that was the first thing we had to do. The second thing we had to do is find out their behavior at, the, at a market price. Uh, the way they do that in a perfectly competitive market is they acknowledge that price is equal to marginal revenue. Uh, so they choose to produce at the quantity where price equals marginal cost. Looking down here, we saw that was 50. At that quantity, what's their average cost per bushel? Well, we go up to the average total cost curve, and we see that uh, their average total cost was 1250 in this case. 
how much profit will they make? We looked at two ways to solve this. One is by finding the total revenue rectangle and the total cost triangle or rectangle and finding the difference. The other is using a little bit of algebra so that we can find the per unit profit uh, and then just create a rectangle that has this as the height and then Q is the width. Multiply those together and you get an area here of 375. We drew that on the graph both ways. Um, and then again, last but not least, find the minimum ABC. That's going to be their shutdown price. As long as the price is higher than that, uh, they will produce at a positive level. I hope you found this useful. I'll be back again in a little bit with some more statistics and economics. See you later, guys. Dr. D out.